good evening, everyone. It's good to see you all. Uh, before we do our, our uh, safety instruction, I do just would like to gently remind you, if you would, through the course of the meeting, as you're speaking, make sure you speak towards the microphone, lean towards it. Sometimes in the recording, it's a little difficult to hear. Uh, some of us, me too, sometimes, I guess, when we speak. So just a friendly reminder. Uh, but I would like to invite Ms. Natalie Best to come and give us our safety instruction. Provide for the safety of those attending this meeting. Please listen to the following instructions in case of an emergency. First, please take a moment to note where your exits are. If an emergency arises that prompts you to evacuate, please exit this room in a quick and orderly manner through one of the doors to your right and then proceed to the nearest stairwell, directions to which are indicated by the exit sign. Once you exit the building, we ask that you safely cross Granville Street, the street that runs inside our building, to our parking lot to be safely away from the building. Our staff will help provide additional direction and assistance. In the case of a tornado warning, please exit this room into the hallway where we will all remain until it is safe to exit. In the event of an active shooter in the building, if there is an accessible escape path, run and try to evacuate the premises. If you can't evacuate, find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found and lock any doors that you can. And as a last resort and only if your life is in imminent danger, fight. Our staff will continue to provide additional assistance on what to do. Thank you for your attention. Well, I'm proud to see you. Eternal God, our Father, we give thanks for the beginning of the eighth month of the year. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We ask that you would bless our minds and our hearts as we consider the things that we need to make a difference in our county. Help us to be con always considering our constituents. Bless us as we think. Help us to do the things that please in thy sight. For Christ's sake. Last year, but we did decrease the point of COVID 19 this year in 2020. 
In the new year, we will pour heads high and continue to serve the county to the best of our ability. I'd like to thank the board for their continued support as well as Mr. Evans and the administrative staff. Does anyone have any questions? I do have some statistics I would like to share. Um, even though the percentages did come down, we are still within range of what our typical percentage rate is um, prior to our high last year. Um, but we did write off um, $6,000 more than what we did for the 10 year statute of limitations. The previous year we wrote off 213. I mean, this year we wrote off 213978 Last year we only wrote off 207000 But in the same sense, we collected more money back tax-wise versus current year taxes. So um, what I mean there is, $1,963.86 more overall than what we did last year. So even though our current year doesn't reflect in our percentage, we did collect more money. Okay. Um, we did have um, six filings of bankruptcy that totaled $16,000. That's something that we cannot enforce collections on. Um, we also did 92 um, active, have currently 92 active payment plans. Um, we're concentrated on debts that often if we issued 161 debts to the state of North Carolina for their debts totaling up to $432,000 in delinquent taxes. Um, we did utilize the... the sorry. So what that means is we send demand letters um, for to the taxpayer saying if those debts are not satisfied, they will sit in a clearinghouse with the state of North Carolina. If you have a um, income tax return, that money will be garnished from that return and sent to the state for that. Or if you have a lottery money that it requires more than six hundred dollars, if they have to go to the state to get it, then we will receive those funds instead of them. Um, we also utilized um, as cheap which is unclaimed money um, and in that claim we collected we issued 237 claims which collected $93,904.61 in back unclaimed money that this taxpayer didn't even know they had the county went in um, by help of Mr. Peter staff of searching those accounts and looking for people who didn't know and we got their money instead of them we did. They didn't have to pay the bill <laughs> out of their pocket. <laughs> it came out of the state's pocket. Um, we did do garnishments um, of wages. We issued thirteen hundred and three dollars. Um, thirteen hundred and three dollars. I'm sorry. Thirteen hundred and three wage garnishments this year. That is down from last year, and um, that is due to QVC. We lost a, a huge employer from the county, so that of course that had a lot of big garnishments from that employer alone. So we did um, that. That number is down. Would, would you give me that number again? One thousand three hundred and three garnishments. I did not total those, no ma'am. I apologize for that. Um, QVC only employed three hundred seventy-nine. Yeah, but out of QVC, we probably had a stack of garnishments this high. But it could not be any greater than 379 because they're not issuing right? No, I'm not saying that that total 1303 was just for QVC. I just that to was say that clear. Out of clarity, so. Yeah, out of that, out of that 1300, it was down because we were not able to garnish QVC. Um, and may I excuse me? Mm -hmm. in, in regards to years previous to this past year, you said that was down. That was down. Can you give us an idea of, is, is it a 
Is that a lot? It's about 1,900 was what we had last year versus 1,300 this year. Um, our attorneys um, foreclosures, we sent uh, 110 demand letters for foreclosure this past fiscal year. We sold 38. The amount of letters owing for those 110 parcels were $181,484. Out of those cumulative, um, this past fiscal year, out of those, we collected $789,425.49. That is both from the sales for payment plans, the current year demands, and the previous year demands that we currently have under payment plans. Um, so that is, um, that's a good figure. It is down from last year as well. We had $1.1 million saved last year, and this year we had seven hundred seven hundred eighty nine thousand four twenty five. So um, it is consistently down, and you know that's just the trend. Um, everybody's is down. We just haven't been able to to do um, what we wanted to do. started prior to the write-off, we will still receive that money. So if Mr. Peters um, closes on a foreclosure that we filed um, a judgment on before July 1, we will still collect that 2010 tax year, or 2011 tax year, excuse me. Another question? Is my recommendment that we... Adopt the resolution as Here to together this action with 
this action of the board of the commissioner shall be entered in full oath upon the minutes of the said board. Whereas approval of this settlement does not relieve the tax collector of her bondsman of liability or any shortage actually existing at the time of the settlement and thereto discovered, nor does it relieve the collector of any criminal liability. Now, therefore, be further resolved by the Eastern County Board of Commissioners that the annual settlement of the tax collector for fiscal year 21-22 and prior years and hereby accepted as presented by the collector. Be it further resolved by the Edge County Commissioners of the Edge County County that the following documents attached here to incorporated herein are approved consisting of two pages for further describing as follows. Settlement of 21 tax accounts as of June 30, 22, including the following that the collector shall be charged with the total amount of all the taxes of his or her hands for the year, including amounts originally charged to her and all amounts subsequently subsequently charged on account of discoveries, all penalties, interests, and costs collected by him in connection with the taxes of the current year, and all other sums collected by, by her. Excuse me. The, the tax collector shall be credited with all sums deposited by her, releases duly allowed by the governing body, and principal amount of taxes consisting of liens on real property, personal property, and registered motor vehicles, and commissions, if any, lawfully paid by the collector as compensation. Number two, settlement of prior years, 2011 through 2020 accounts and 2021 tax accounts as of June 30, 2018. As of June 30, excuse me, 2022. For Edge County and its municipalities in which she is charged to collect an annual statement of collection for July 1, 2020. 21 through June 30, 2022, of non-tax revenues. Be it further resolved that the list of 21, 2021 unpaid real property taxes and the list of persons not owning real property due to 2021 personal property taxes remain unpaid or hereby acknowledged as received the tax collections report of 2011 through 2020 as of June 30, 2022 are acknowledged as received. This report of minimum taxes is acknowledged as received and the report concerning efforts made to locate personal property and other tax units along to delinquent taxpayers and the efforts made under the provisions of NCGS 105-364 to collect taxes is acknowledged as received. Adopted this first day of August, 2022. Motion.
or personal property and attached wages and or other funds for such taxpayer for and on an account thereof in accordance with the law. Here further authorize the call upon the sheriff to levy upon the sale of personal property owner execution for the payment of taxes. Within available funds in the budget ordinance and personnel positions established, the collector, tax collector may appoint employees and levy the authority to perform these functions authorized by the Machinery Act of Chapter 105 of North Carolina General Statute and other applicable laws for current and previous year taxes. County personnel in the tax collector's office continue to serve in their respective positions. Taxes on classified motor vehicles for 2011 and prior years are deemed uncollectible. Therefore, the county commissioners pursuant to 105-373-H do hereby relieve the tax collector of the charge of collecting taxes on classified motor vehicles listed pursuant to GS 105-330.3A1. <laughs> All opposed? Hearing okay, none, it is approved and you are recharged. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Now, you can't hardly find a house to buy. 
So <clears throat> you're going to have uh, new tax dollars. So please prioritize this, prioritize this new money uh, to improve our educational system for all our schools equally with new, much needed vocational training programs to meet the demands of local industry and business. Thank you. Next is uh, Teresa Letford. Hello, my name is Teresa Letford. I reside at 1769 Pine Top Creek Road, and I live in Gisela, and this is a of some abandoned property that um, in my neighborhood was actually down the, the road from where I live. For those that are not familiar with Pine Top Creek Road and the big town of Pine Top, this would be the road that South East Home Middle School is on. It's just up the road from that. And I have pictures here in case anyone wants to take a look at it. But these are the two houses that have been abandoned quite some time now. Um, my concerns also, you can see the over right there. The windows are busted out. Not only is this an eyesore, it is it causes safety concerns there's been drug activity going on in this area homeless people are starting to reside in this my concerns also is it's affecting the property for the other part of the neighborhood it could be you know causing the value of that to go down as well i've been addressing this with the planning department this is the third week now i've been calling um, addressing my concerns and I spoke with Cynthia and she said I'll send Brandon out to and I told her I said I have pictures I can show you what I'm talking about because at first they thought oh it's just somebody not cutting the grass I said no it's not overgrown vegetation I'm talking about I'm talking about this is abandoned houses with windows busted out she said well I'll send Brandon out to, to take a look at it and I told her the address and where it was and gave her you know pretty good details on that and she said I'll get back with you I didn't do that so I called and she said, well, Brandon went out and took pictures of one, but he didn't have the address of the second. And I said, well, this is, they're like two doors down. I said, how can you miss that? So she said, I have to send him out again. I said, okay, gas money, we'll go back out there again. So he goes back out there again, no call back. Didn't hear back from anyone about any of this. So I called back again and she was like, well, we could um, probably send a courtesy letter. To them. She said, but I don't know where to send the courtesy letter. I said, well, one of them did go in foreclosure. There's a, cur a, a buyer that bought the lot and the piece of property for a little of nothing, and it does have a current mailing address. Why don't you send it to the same place you send the tax bill to? The other one is probably getting ready to be in foreclosure. Taxes have been paid in that for quite some time. But I asked at that time, I said, so a courtesy letter, what does that entail? She said, well, we were just asking to the owners of, or if we can locate them to just come out and board up the property. Well, I don't know about any of you, but I don't think I would want to live next to this or across the street from any of this. And to me, boarding up the property doesn't make it look a lot better than what this is, nor does it provide any more safety or uh, value to the home there. So my wish is that maybe something could be looked into as far as having the either the owners be held accountable for the property, um, take care of it, or either need to be torn down or just needs to be addressed further. Like they have been contacting the planning department and receiving no call back to Barton. First thing I'll note is that um, there's two issues here. One is the grass, and one is the home itself. Obviously, we have minimum housing standards um, that there was a process to address that. Somewhat of a lengthy process, but it's certainly something that we can start. Now, the grass in, in the county, we don't have a, a grass ordinance. It's that difficult to implement in a, in a county. Um, so. Cases where we get calls about that, they do oftentimes will send a letter to the property owner and say there have been complaints about the grass. And oftentimes that does, we do see some results from that. There's really two different issues here. Beyond that, I, I need to find out more detail from, from the planning department and certainly 
start that process, the initial process, would that come from a neighbor, uh, a community member, uh, Ms. Letchworth, you know, me, you, whoever? It's, okay. it's, it's complaint driven. Okay, complaint driven, okay. And, I, and she has better than me, so I would see what would be hard in Forest County wide. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of tenant farmhouses and abandoned houses and old homes. I mean, where would, I mean, how could you apply for some? Now we certainly try to use what we have, minimum housing code. Uh, we have a solid waste ordinance if there are trash debris piled up in a farm property, abandoned motor vehicle ordinance. We have to have an old junk car sitting on a property. I mean, any of those that we do have on the books, we certainly take. And most of it is complaint driven. That's true. It's complaint driven. It's not, it's not counting an issue. That's right. We don't, no, we don't, we, we don't have an inspection. Good evening, commissioners, and thank you for this opportunity uh, to speak on behalf of our children's and sagacious thoughts. That said, uh, let's stop lying to the public. The narrative surrounding the tried issue of the merger is rooted in a lie. The very language is purposely deceptive. The merger, as I've said before, and I'll say again tonight, the merger does not apply to this instance. Uncouple, break up, perhaps, but the merger, no. The deception has led those who are otherwise rational to make irrational statements and decisions. A scathing analysis for sure and yet a true assessment that gives way to the question, why now? The push should not be to reclaim children. They have never belonged to the county school system. These children, majority African Americans, are the legacy of a now defunct system, Rocky Mountain City Schools, who have been left to languish in inadequate buildings and low performing schools and are now being used as political pawns to further the agendas of a Nash County megalomaniac and toothless leadership in Nash County. What will be the financial impact? What will be the transitional impact? What will be the effect on the tax rate? How are you going to uh, match the approved teacher supplement of Nash County? Who is coming? to Edgecombe County to work for less pay in this economy. 
to even consider this as an option, as an option is wrong headed. What kind of half school legal advice are you giving? You, you seem to be thinking and working within the context of parameters set by someone else. Refocus and do what's best for all children in Edgecombe County, what's best for those children in the city and in rural areas. Let's start thinking outside the box. Let's push for our local legislative delegation to introduce a bill that will remove Edgecombe County's responsibility to fund anything outside the city limits. Remember, this was not a county counter merger. It was a city county merger. Nash County has carved out its own brand of legislative influence while Edgecombe County twiddles its proverbial thumbs and has been rendered politically impotent. Let's move away from knee jerk reactions to counterfeit public issues and toward the push for all parties involved to improve academic performance and become producers of young people who are prepared for the world of work and for higher education opportunities. Thank you. Oh, that's all, Mr. Chairman, that we have to call and sign up. We may have some of these Good evening. 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 I was not feeling well during the July meeting, so I did not speak of that. Uh, I'm doing it live, and people are saying they can't hear y'all, so y'all need to talk in the mic. Okay, back to the okay. uh, I was not feeling well during the July meeting, so I did attend the meeting when you voted on the merger of Edgecombe County Public Schools and Madison County Public Schools. I began in the late 80s attending attend the Edgecombe County board meetings and challenged the system for years. I remember the bond referendum that Nash County Public Schools received, and it appears that Edgecombe County Public Schools got a little out of it. I attended and videoed all of the public meetings that were held for the community to attend about the merger, and was hard missing the meetings when you voted. I was very disappointed in the vote. I don't understand why the vote failed because facts, the facts of how Edgecombe County has been treated and as it stands, it will not change unless Edgecombe County bring our children back home where they belong. I'm not going into details of why, because the board knows what has transpired over the years. I was very disappointed in Commissioner Viola Harris and also Ralph Hill uh, voting against the merger. It was clear to me in previous meetings where Commissioner Donald Bosman, my district, and William Wooten stood. I don't understand why anyone that is politically inclined and knowledgeable of what is at stake, that they would not want to see the murder take place. Someone said they are worried about what they don't know. But my problem is what we do know. We know there are around 1,700 students that will come back to Edgecombe County Public Schools. We know staff, facilities, transportation, and others that they receive now will be needed in Edgecombe County, so what is the problem? We know that monies from the state and others are going to Nash County Public Schools now will be coming to Edgecombe County Public Schools. I believe the Edgecombe County Commission and the Edgecombe County Public Schools joint meeting in Princeville to discuss the merger in February 24, on February 24, 2020, that I recorded and I have it on YouTube I got a copy for you, but I got it. Uh, I got the link that I'm going to email so you can, when you pull up email, you go straight to the YouTube page. Um, explain it well about why the demerger is on the table and what it would take, what, what would take place after the demerger. I arrived a little late at the February meeting because I got off work at 3.30 p.m. I work for a real job, but I got to keep up with y'all. Uh, and attended the Rocky Mount City Council meeting at 4 o'clock. And then arrived at the meeting in Princeville shortly after it be had begun. The presentation begun. The pre presentation by the county manager and the Edgecombe County superintendent, uh, superintendent, 
And so I got to go to the center and her thing was awesome to me. I got it. What I got back then, I get today. Add two years to what was discussed, and it means that the cost has risen. It means that the longer we wait, it will continue to rise. I will end now because I think you got the message. However, I want to end on the following note. As I review, as I view Commissioner Harris' video of the public comments, I see Reverend Roosevelt Heath addressed the board, and he used my physical address as he was to give his name and his address. It is a fact that he just registered and with the next county kind of board of elections on March 20, 2022, and that he lives at 2820 South Church Street, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. At least four of you know that he does not live in Tarver, and know he has not lived in Leeds since the 1999 flood, but use that address until this, this change. He is also confirmed he has been living in the next county at, at, at the next county address for several years on WNCR TV, brought some real morning show, where some, some I know look at it daily, thankfully, when he talked about when his son beat him up. I am asking this board to address Roosevelt, Reverend Roosevelt D for giving this board my address when he addressed you. Thank you in advance, and this is 15 copies, but like I said, I'm gonna send you the ones online so you can go straight to the uh, YouTube page. Thank you. Uh, if in fact you did use that, just please contact Reverend Dave so I don't know and determine if that's the case because if I have to that not be done, I want to say you take care of it. Yes, that's okay. If in fact it is, if in fact it is the case, take care of it. Could you repeat that? I didn't hear I asked, I asked our attorney okay. if in fact it is the case for him to take care of that with Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Comments for that. So, hearing none, we got. Please come forward. Please come forward. Good evening. My name is Tricia Wilson. Um, we live at 3767 Howard Avenue Extension, which is right here on the corner of Howard Avenue and McNair Road. We own St. Anne's Chapel, and we have noticed. A large increase in the uh, noise of uh, vehicles, whether it's trucks individually owned or if it's motorcycles. And we understand it's a busy intersection. We are more than happy to know that the industrial park's down the road, but the, especially the last two years during COVID, uh, the trucks and personally owned trucks and the motorcycles have gotten. Uh, excessively larger, louder. We are a retreat center. We do meditations twice a week. Uh, it's very difficult to have a meditation, a stress reduce, reducing uh, program, and then all of a sudden you have a loud, loud vehicle that we have to stop our program to allow it to go over because we cannot hear our music. Um, I also am a sound healer and I have been doing energy sessions on my front porch because of COVID and I cannot, I have to stop my program because of the loud noise. Um, I called to find out if we had an ordinance and apparently we do from 1980. But the other night I was driving um, up in Edenton and I noticed they have a noise ordinance that's strictly enforced and it is on their city as you come in, I don't know if y'all can see that, I didn't mm -hmm. um, bring a picture, but they have it. Um, I contacted their Edenton um, community. How do they enforce it? Uh, it's enforced three different ways. If it's in town, it's a police. If it's out in the county, it's the sheriff or um, also a state trooper has um, addressed it. Um, So um, I was hoping that there's something we could do to, um, oh, I also contacted the um, inspection here in Tarboro, one of the inspection sites, and they said they do not have a decibel meter, that they only are requested to make sure that there aren't any holes in the muffler. It does not count for a muffler that's been thought of that can still pass inspection. So we don't have anything to um, regulate this. And um, I will do 
do whatever I have to. If I have to sit out there and, and take trifling placement numbers down so I can um, address this issue, it has to be coordinated. So if there's anything you all can do, we'd really appreciate it. Right. If Eden can do it, um, Eden Pen is we get a lot of their money from um, tourism, and I think I'm out of breath because I'm used to talking to y'all. But um, I think Tarboro has a great potential to bring in with our historic district, and um, because we are a retreat center, we are bringing in people from outside the um, not just the county but the state, and we would like you to help support us grow our community. Whew, upset. Sorry, y'all. My three things where I was going to yell, I was going to please say and swear. So I haven't seen one yet. But uh, anyhow. I think you've done a good job of okay. telling us about Thank you. But I do believe that uh, she was, her dad she stayed in It's in the county. Yeah. Uh, how was, do we have an office? We do have an office. Well, we certainly would. Uh, we certainly would ask our sheriff uh, to. The manager would certainly ask our sheriff to. Is there any way we could get a sign posted on the city limits? Now I know that's the town, uh, but just it's really attractive the way Eden has done it. I look at look at. I don't know if it's a DOT. I don't know what it is. Right. But look at the possibility of of that. Uh, let's say it's on the street. Any way, any way that we can help, see if we can help. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Is there anybody else here to speak? Hearing none, moving on to other business. All right. So uh, next on the agenda, uh, budget amendments. I will point out uh, a few, if I may. So, So if you, if you look at the column where it says increase or decrease, yeah, you'll see that those those are different numbers. So on number 16, it's uh, $203 that's being moved. On 17, it's uh, a little over $24,000 that's being moved. And then on number, what was it, 21, you said? Twenty-one is a thousand dollars that's being moved. I think what you're seeing the number is these. Uh, we're pulling these from fund balance, so we're using that fund balance at the current time number. But the main thing is that the change in the middle, that increase or decrease. So you'll see that those are different um, budget. Yes, sir. Thank you for pointing that out. Go ahead, sir. Sure. So um, we'll go back to number one. I do want to point out. Number one there in your packet, uh, this is a, a investor development fund grant from North Carolina Department of Commerce for King for a project. Uh, this was a previously awarded grant and what we're doing is we are rolling uh, that grant project forward. You'll see we have almost $2.3 million uh, left in that project so we are moving that forward. We corrected the error originally we were showing it was pulling from fund balance, but in fact, the revenue source is the grant itself. This is a reimbursable grant, so we don't have those funds already. We don't have those funds already in hand. Um, number two, um, and there will be a few others I'll point out. You know, you want to notice that this is, in fact, pulling from fund balance, $1,345. Um, so 
this is to um, this is for the local match for the JCPC program, and we had the incorrect match number. It was one thousand three hundred forty-five dollars uh, less than what it should be. So this is to correct that. As you know, we are required to provide a ten percent match uh, for the JCPC um, program. Uh, number three, this was previous to replace IT switches in the Human Services Building. This was um, budgeted in the FY22 budget. When we prepared the 23 budget, we thought that this was going to be complete by the end of the fiscal year, but it was not. Uh, so we're asking that you appropriate the balance owed on that, which is $75,000, appropriating that to the hardware software line in the IT department. Number four, this is um, District 6 uh, sewer rehab project. Um, as you know, we have um, funding that has been earmarked from the USDA Rural Development Loan and Grant to do this project. This is um, including free development costs. And so this is funded by, by the county uh, it will be reimbursed by the project, so we do, we're rolling that project forward. We do need to appropriate $38,930 from fund balance for that. Um, I won't, won't touch on all of these, but certainly stop me if, if you have a question about any. I'll go to number 14. You'll see here number 14 and following. These are a number of grants. These are grants that are advanced to the county. We've already received these funds. They were received last fiscal year, so we have those in hand. At the end of the fiscal year, basically, they, they fall into or dump into, uh, into general fund. So now we are appropriating that money out of general fund into the uh, various projects. The first one is the highway safety grant funds that are rolled from last year to current years in the uh, sheriff's office funds already received. The next one again, Sheriff's Office number 15. Uh, these are unused donated funds from FY22, moving those forward. FY23, $3,305. Number 16 is the uh, upfront fees received by the state, $203 that were received last year or balance of what was received last year that's being rolled forward. Uh, number 17, this is um, NCDPS, Department of Public Safety, uh, grant funds that were received last year, the balance of which $24,412 uh, would be moving those forward with that budget amendment. Number 18, this is in the Emergency Services uh, Department. Uh, this is for the what's called the EMPG grant funds that were received last fiscal year. We have those in hand, uh, so to be rolling this forward as well, $45,301 forward from fund balance to current fiscal year. Uh, number uh, 20, I want to point this out. Um, I think you'll recall um, us discussing that CSX um, wanted to make a uh, grant donations to the various agencies that were involved in responding to the fire at QVC. I said CSX, did I? QVC, get my letters right. QVC wanted to make donations to the agencies that were involved in responding to the fire at QVC. And um, so that they had asked us for a list of all, all of the fire departments and other agencies we've given the list. So they are making donations to these agencies through um, the United Way, and so our emergency services office is receiving uh, $20,000 um, from QVC, and so this will be to appropriate um, the funds uh, received from QVC. And we and and they don't have any particular they don't stipulate any particular use of it. We will use it for miscellaneous expenses um, in both uh, emergency services and. Uh, in our EMS uh, unit. Uh, number 21, again, this is transfer and moving forward $1,000 in donated funds from last fiscal year to the current. And uh, then you have at your plate.
States numbers 23 and uh, 24 that I would ask that you would consider adding these two. This is an Department of uh, uh, Social Services. Yes, sir. So what this is, I, and I should have flagged this, but I'm glad you did it. <coughs> so what this is, as you know, you approve using some of our ARPA money. Of course, we're using all of that to replace general fund dollars so that then we can use general fund dollars to do those list of activities that you have approved. One of, those, one of the list of activities was to do a, a C CIP or crisis intervention program like program. You know, uh, social service, they have a crisis intervention program for families that need to meet income requirements. This is to help them to get past some type of uh, uh, family crisis or employment crisis or, or whatever it might be. And so, what this is, we budgeted that under the uh, uh, we budgeted that in the uh, in the county's ARPA funding, and so we are now moving that into a line that we created in uh, in DSS to better uh, to appropriate that so that they can use it. Later in the agenda, I have some information that I'll share with you okay. about exactly how that how that program goes. Okay. Okay. Yes, Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. But that's what that is. That's okay. We are we're using the term now ARPA enabled program. We're not using ARPA funds, but that ARPA money is enabling us to use county funds to do that program. And what was the other one? Number six? Yes, sir. Number six, so um, in uh, social services, um, they estimate when we prepare the budget what the administrative reimbursement is going to be. For a number of our programs in social services, we get reimbursed from the state, depending on the program as to the percentage. Sometimes it's 50%, 60%, 6%, 75%, depending on the program. And so they estimate how much that's going to be. We really don't know the exact number until right there at the beginning of the fiscal year. And so they always come back in to modify that. So we're increasing that budget by 142477 So this is the administrative reimbursement that we'll receive from the state. Okay. That's right, for the low income water assistance program. That's right. And that's similar to the low income energy assistance program that we have. That's right. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions? Okay. My motion to approve? So moved. Questions? All in favor, let me know my vote is aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, now it is approved. is item uh, D uh, under other business. Uh, so in, in order to, as, as you know, that our, our uh, Captain Walters, our financial director, um, retired. And, um, and so we need to now uh, recruit for that position. Um, in order to recruit a person with the requisite skills and experience needed to run the finance department and manage the county's financial operations, I suggest that we create a chief financial officer or CFO position. For your consideration, I provided a draft job description. Uh, you, you'll see that compared to the finance director position 
and has increased uh, requirements uh, for this position. I'm also recommending that this position be on at uh, grade 30 on the uh, salary scale. And certainly if you approve this, uh, we will uh, we will advertise and recruit for this position. As you, you know, uh, the center for job description and our uh, general side of the center for questions and the thing we move forward and the panel motion. Acknowledge that motion, Mr. Lewis? Second. All in favor, let's be no matter what the time. Aye. All opposed? Okay, now they approve. Thank you. Item C. In the planning department, we currently have a senior planner position which is filled and a planner position which is vacant. Ms. Katina Bradley, our planning and inspection director, recommends that the operations of the office would be better served by creating a planning technician position to fill instead of a planner. Now, this is a, a position we do not currently have on our salary scale. Therefore, I recommend that you approve the addition of a planning technician position at a grade 13 on your salary scale. I do want to know for the record that this is not, we will fill this instead of the planning position, planner position, and therefore is no additional budget request uh, for the planning. I'll check that and say, let's see. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Changes are tracked on the ordinances in your packet. I'll be happy to review these changes in detail. 
detail if you like. Otherwise, I recommend that you approve the revised ordinance as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none, it is approved. Okay, and what was your question on which one? Um, we don't have to agree with that, but we want to see the blue valley, blue valley. Okay, what that is, it's uh, it should be three three million three hundred seventy nine thousand three hundred thirty two. When it tracks the changes, it underlines the change. It shows you what number was there before, and it underlines the change there. So that that's good. So three million three hundred seventy nine thousand three hundred thirty two. Yeah, when they track the change, when it, the system tracks the change, is how it shows. Good question. Um, so in 2018, you approved updates and corrections to our personnel policy that included a change to section 10 on workers' compensation found on page 50. The change was to not allow employees out on workers' compensation to use sick and vacation leave to make up for the difference they received in workers' compensation, being that it only pays two-thirds of the employee's wage. Allowing leave to be used creates a disincentive to returning to work. Being that the workers' compensation is not subject to federal and state taxes, allowing the use of leave to make up the difference puts the employee's take-home pay at, if not slightly above, what they usually make. So that was corrected on that page 50 back in 2018. We recently noticed that another relative section in the personnel policy on page 38 was not changed at the same time, and it now creates conflicting statements in our policy. Therefore, I recommend that you approve amending the personnel policy on page 30 in section 3 to state an employee may not use sick leave to supplement workers' compensation benefits up to 100% of the gross salary. Any questions for that? Question? All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Item H is regarding Sheriff's Highway Safety Program grant application. Um, Sheriff does plan to apply for um, the Governor's Highway Safety Program. This is the second year of a four-year grant. The funds are used to designate a full-time deputy to address traffic collisions, speeding complaints, and other issues related to traffic safety and education. The grant does require a match of $19,394, which will come from funds already budgeted in the sheriff's office. I recommend that you approve the resolution authorizing the submission of the application to the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program. Motion. Motion. Second. Question. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, hearing none, just approve. Alpha list and release for the general approval. And I thank you all for the board's attention. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I'm happy to answer some questions. Otherwise, I recommend that you approve. Any questions? If not, I'll get a motion. All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. aye. All opposed, hearing none, just approved. Contract not viewing, I thank you for the board's attention.
Uh, you have one contract before you tonight. This is uh, in our IT department for what's called a scale system replacement. This was anticipated in our budget. It was budgeted in the IT department. You'll see as a recommended contract approval of $148,944 with Computer Central of uh, Wilson Incorporated. Recommend that you approve.
Right, so this will be run out of social services, and they will advertise this as they do their other programs, yes, sir. And so, um, absolutely, our tax department will know if they come across a, a citizen who may qualify for this, that they can refer them. You see we have the workforce development indicators there. Um, I do want to give you a, a quick update uh, that I received from um, the folks at the Department of Transportation here at the Harbor office about bridge projects. And so they, they uh, informed me that three bridges that are clustered together over the Swift Creek on Seven Bridges Road in Edgecombe County, um, S.T. Wooten Corporation will start in September and they expect to reopen that road by May of 2023. Mm -hmm. NC-122 Bridge over Town Creek, north of Pine Top in the county. Sanford contractors will start this, um, start uh, this month, actually in July they started. They expect to reopen the road in March of 2023. NC-97 over Swift Creek, north of Tarboro in the county. Sanford contractors contractors will begin uh, began in July and they expect to reopen the road by April of 2023. So I know all of you have heard about uh, previous contractors, delays that had to pull those projects, um, uh, reissue those contracts, and so now those are getting up and started and moving forward. Just wanted you to be aware of that. Anyway. Oh, that's seven months. Um, NC-122. North of Pine Top. The one that made it in April 2023. Right, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's caused a lot of turmoil since the school. I mean, who's right there that can't get to the school? Mm -hmm. Right off the street, they have to go spend more money on gas.